And joining me now is Armin Georgian, our International Affairs Editor. Armin, Iraq finally has a new government, but many in the country say it's still going to be business as usual. Yes, they are saying that, and protesters have not been impressed by what they've seen uh, over the last six months. Uh, you will remember that uh, they managed to get the previous prime minister out at a great personal cost uh, after a lot of uh, demonstrations and after much bloodshed. Uh, and what they've been wanting, of course, are these profound changes, an end to corruption, cronyism and mismanagement. Um, and after the previous prime minister stepped down, what did the protest movement get? Well, it got six months of wrangling of uh, various blocks in the Iraqi parliament uh, vying for government portfolios. Uh, that looked very much like uh, business as usual. And ultimately, the, the new prime minister, in order to get his vote of confidence in parliament, he essentially had to let the these various political blocks in parliament uh, pick uh, who was actually going to enter the cabinet. So the prime minister didn't have that much freedom uh, to choose his own uh, cabinet. And this has been held up as another example of, of the old politics. So how can the new prime minister rebalance the relationship with Iran and also with the United States? Uh, well, Prime Minister al Qadimi is a former intelligence chief, so of course he's no stranger to balancing U.S. and Iranian interests. The, the problem he has now is that the economy is so bad, this slump in oil, par oil prices, which of course uh, it's the oil revenues are kind of the lifeblood of the Iraqi uh, state coffers. Uh, now, with with uh, with this with this major problem in the oil markets, uh, Iraq is now much more vulnerable, both vis-a-vis -vis Iran and the United States. So at the moment, um, Iraq is buying uh, Iranian electricity and gas. It's very important that those supplies continue into Iraq. Uh, and so far, the US is allowing Iraq these waivers on sanctions so that Iraq can continue to purchase uh, this Iranian energy. But what the U.S. has been doing is actually shortening the length of each waiver as a way of putting more pressure on the Iraqi government. Uh, a critical juncture is going to come uh, next month when the U.S. and this new Iraqi government will negotiate the future of the U.S. military presence in Iraq. It's very possible that the U.S. will say at that point, well, uh, we can work out some sort of deal, but you, the Iraqi government, you have to rein in uh, pro-Iranian militias uh, in your country uh, uh, and uh, push back against uh, the Iranians. Otherwise, we might not grant you these sanctions waivers anymore so that you can keep buying Iranian energy. Meanwhile, the Iranians, of course, could very well say, well, if uh, if you you know if you want us to continue selling us this gas and electricity at X price, uh, then uh, you have to push back against the U.S. military presence in your country. Uh, so uh, this very vulnerable economic situation uh, means Iraq could be politically squeezed at both ends, both by the U.S. and by Iran. Armin Georgian, thank you so much. In other news, at least seven people were killed.